Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of Mies van der Rohe. Today I want to answer a question that I receive a lot from my students. What is Grasshopper good for? Before I do that, I just want to share a couple things about myself, what I've been doing. So I just returned from a trip a road trip actually with my family where we took a road trip from Chicago to LA and we went through 11 states and we saw a lot of really amazing architecture and one project that stands out is the Broad Museum in Los Angeles and what stands out to me about that project is a lot of times we create these fabulous pieces of geometry in Grasshopper and you often wonder are these are are these things buildable? Well, that to me is a project where Grasshopper comes to life. So do a Google search for Broad Museum, Los Angeles, California, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, answering the question, what is Grasshopper good for? I'm going to do this over a series of multiple videos that answer that question. And today we're going to look specifically at generating multiple values. That is one thing that Grasshopper is really good for, generating multiple values. And we'll use Peter Eisenman's Holocaust Museum in Berlin as an example. Here you see an image of the completed memorial and it's a series of extruded rectangles that all uh, have a different height to them and we can see this in an aerial view and when I look at this I think how did he go about designing this how did Peter Eisenman did he make a physical model where he had a bunch of these different um, extruded rectangles and he was placing them I, I, I don't know but I could imagine that he was working with some people in the office that were using Grasshopper and they were able to generate this using multiple values so let's jump back into Grasshopper and we're going to start by making a, a region, a region or, a, or you can think of it as a site where those plinths exist. And I'm going to do that by making a rectangle and I'll go ahead and make the size uh, about 300. Uh, in this case it's 300 feet, not quite as big as what you saw there in the images but something about that size. Okay, so we've created this, this region and we're gonna go ahead and populate this region with points. And we're gonna do that using a populate 2D. Okay, we'll plug that rectangle and again that rectangle becomes the region and you see now it is populated with these points. And what we can do is we can host a rectangle to each one of those points. I'm going to go ahead and generate another rectangle. Okay, and we'll give that rectangle a size. Again, this is feet, so maybe six feet by four feet. Okay, so if I zoom in in Rhino, you're going to see those rectangles are hosted to each one of the points, and I can make these a little bit larger. Okay, so in Peter Eisenman's Holocaust Memorial, I mentioned that it was extruded rectangles. So we're going to go ahead and extrude these. and we're going to extrude them in the Z direction and we're going to give those a height okay so in talking about generating multiple values this is where it really comes into play because right now I use the Z vector for the extrusion and then I gave it a value so that's the height now that height is applied to every one of these rectangles so they all have the same height well I want them to have different heights so 
there's many ways to generate multiple values and one way to do that is through something called a random okay so let's take a look at that random so the first input of that random is a range okay what are what's my minimum and maximum for those heights the second one is the number of random values and then there is a C that will shift those random values around. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and set up a, a range of values. So right now this is this extrusion height is set to 10. So I want to go a little bit taller than that. So maybe I want to have extrusion heights from realistically from 2 feet to say 15 feet. Okay, so I can do that using a domain uh, which is going to be my my minimum my minimum and maximum so we'll go ahead and we're going to construct the domain we'll plug that in and the domain start will be 2 and the domain end will be 15 Now, I need a height or a value for each one of the points. Okay, so let's go back to this populate 2D. By default, it's 100 points. Okay, so let's, I'm just going to make a number slider and I'll type in, I'm, I'm going to type in 150 so I get some more points just so you guys can see that changing. So it's populating more. And then, our, our seed is something that we could use to um, shuffle. I use the word shuffle, shuffle these around. So as I move these, you see those multiple uh, points shifting or shuffling around. Okay, so my count is 150. I have 150 extruded uh, rectangles. So I need 150 values if I want each one to have a different height. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug that in to my random. And then I'm going to plug this in to the Z vector. So I'm getting rid of the value of 10, 10 feet, which is what it is extruded now. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And I'm going to plug in this random capsule. And now you see that I'm getting some random heights and I can start to increase the the larger ones start to make those taller and maybe the minimum start to increase those and I can also add a number slider for the seed so I can shuffle those around I'm going to just take this one and copy and paste it And now I can shuffle those. So we generated multi multiple values using this random capsule. And that's one way to generate multiple values. And I'm going to cover some more in some future videos and some future tutorials. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and, and give it a like if you found some of the information useful. You'll see my head pop up in the upper left that will allow you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you think that this view video and other videos will be helpful, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also, um, give me a like on this video and also give me some comments below. I received some really good comments uh, on some of my previous videos and I plan on addressing those comments and, and adding them to to or making tutorials about them so I've, I've got some good feedback on those um, thanks for watching and I look forward to talking to you on the next video thank you